Good morning, everyone. Are we going to have communion after the morning service? Thursday is book out night. August the 5th, August the 5th at 7.30. Registration fees are 15 a ride or 20 for unlimited rides. Events and other announcements. Friday, August the 13th, 6.30 p.m., Man's Ministry Meal with message. Join us for fellowship and fun. Sunday, August the 15th, Play Day Series. Registrations at noon and event starts at 1 p.m. Elder meeting, elder meeting, open meeting starts at 6 p.m. and closed meeting starts at 7 p.m. Sunday, August 29th, the fifth Sunday potluck, potluck lunch after Sunday service. Please bring a dish to share. Play day series two. Registrations at noon. Event starts at 1 p.m. What TV program do cows watch in bed? Movies.
make a little bit more noise. I've got these plugs in my ears and they're making all kinds of goofy noise right now. So, are y'all happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yeah! All right. Well, are you expecting a blessing this morning? Let me ask you that. Yep. Woo! All right, well, we're going to worship his name this morning. That means making a joyful noise to the Lord. So y'all don't be shy about helping us out where you can. Uh, we're going to talk about this ground right here. This is holy ground. Amen.
to rest on holy ground. Oh, city of shame, shame, drink the cool water, drink the cool water, hear what Jesus says, become clay for the potter, as the evening is growing.
Shit. 
shame and regret But when I hear you whisper Child, lift up your head We do things a little differently. We don't pass an offering plate, but if the Lord leads you to bless the ministry in that manner, there's a little wooden church house back there by the back door. And also by that church house, there's some little green sheets of paper. You might see these in the seats there ahead of you. If the Lord speaks to your heart today and you come to a decision for him for the first time, please take a moment, fill that out, drop it in that church house over there. It is the most important decision you're going to come to on this side of eternity. We just love to stand with you as you start on that journey. Brother Bob, you look like you're about there. I am ready. Oh, you turn it on. Now. Oh, now. Woo. Yeah, fellas. <laughs> now you are. I, I'm here. I'm here. Any prayer requests? Yes, sir. Yes, COVID is making its way back, but it's not as as uh, powerful. I guess I'm trying to say. It's more. It's more uh, contagious. It's not as Daily. For your checkup. For my checkup? That's right. I go to Monday, me and my wife fly to Illinois to get the MRI for my brain scan. Come back to you. Yes, sir? Uh, let's continue to lift Marsha up in prayer. Now, all of a sudden, for the first time in her life, she developed vertigo. Vertigo? Yeah. So uh, she's been suffering from that since Monday. Oh, wow. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Okay. Get you. Huh? Okay. Yep, keep reading her first. Anybody else? Yes? Anybody else? Yep. Praise the Lord. My knee's working. <laughs> 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 he, he's almost right back to normal. <laughs> well, better than before, I have to say. Yeah. Or they did it for nothing. <laughs> Anybody else? Yep. Me and my relationship with my horse and 
Oh, okay. To help. All right. Anybody else? All right, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we love you so, so very much. Father God, we love you because you first loved us. Back in John's Gospel, Lord, he says that you are love. It's that agape love that, that we need to, to love each other. We have our brothers and sisters and know we get done wrong sometimes. Father God, we also thank you for your, uh, not only your love, but for your mercy. And Father God, just more than anything else, we, pay, we thank you for your grace. Father, just you extended to us when we, how we deserved so much worse. Father God, you extended that mercy and grace to us so that we could have a relationship with you through your Son. Father, you heard all the prayer requests here today. Father God, I also want to pray about those that maybe didn't speak up or when there's something to pray for. There's just so many things. Father God, I can't keep up with all the ones that were in my feeble mind, everybody that spoke. Father God, you knew what they were going to be before you, before we did. Father God, I believe that you were so awesome that you began to put in, into motion the things that needed to happen eternity past, Father God, just to, uh, for, for our prayer request to be answered. You're that awesome. You're that all-knowing. Father God, we just thank you for what you've done. Lord, we look forward to what you, else you're going to do in our lives and in our church. Father God, I can't help but think about it. maybe there's someone coming here today that's lost. Father, we never know. Lord, this, we could be calling you, Lord, for all of our life and then find out that uh, we never were really saved, but we don't have your spirit in us. So, Father, I pray that, uh, Lord, that if, if someone did come in this church with that emptiness in the heart, they don't know what's missing. And Father God, those who are watching on Facebook Live or, or even on YouTube later, Father, that you would hear their prayers, first of all, and Father God, that you would touch the hearts that's watching. Lord, that, uh, and just with the same prayer, Father God, they have that emptiness in their heart. Lord, I just pray by the end of this service today that they would cry out to you and ask Jesus to come into their hearts and feel that emptiness that they have. And it's in his precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All righty then. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We're going to be in verses 1 through 11 today. Last week we were, I'm doing it backwards, last week we are in uh, verses 12 through the, uh, the balance of the chapter. We're backing up. I saw something I really wanted to preach on uh, last Sunday, so, uh, so we're going to do that here today. Beginning in verse 1. If any of you has a dispute with, a, with another, dare he, dare, dare he take it before the ungodly for judgment instead of, uh, instead of before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if you are to judge the world, are you not, uh, are you not competent to judge Trivial matter, trivial cases. Excuse me. Do you not know that you will be judged? That you will judge angels. How much more the things of, of this life? Therefore, if you if you have if you have dispute, uh, disputes up about such matters, appoint as judges even men uh, of little account in the in the church. I say this to shame you. Is it, po is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to judge a dispute between believers? But instead, of, 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 uh, but instead one brother goes uh, to law against another. And this in front of unbelievers. And he kind of put an explanation point on that. So he was really upset about this. And this and with unbelievers, he just raised his voice to them then. The very fact that you have lawsuits among you means that you have, you, you have been completely defeated already. Why not rather be wrong? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you yourselves cheat, uh, cheat and do wrong. And you do this to your brothers. Do you not know 
that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be, dece uh, be deceived, neither the sexual immora immorality, uh, <laughs> uh, the, sexual, the sexually immor immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor, female prost nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor greedy or drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what you, and what some of you were, uh, and that is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of Jesus Christ, and by the Spirit of our God. The title of today's message is "Settled Out of Court." Settled out of court. You know, one of the anomalies of, of being a church uh, minister is that uh, we aren't reckoned in the eyes of the law to be working for, we are reckoned in the eyes of the law to be working for God than, human, uh, than any other human agency or employer. In the case brought by, the, by a Methodist minister in 1984, which went before the, the high court, all the way to the high court, the master of the role declared in their judgment ministers or, or, or religious <laughs> ministers of religion owe their allegiance to God rather than uh, to a ter terrestrial authority. The method, this is from the Methodist Conference uh, versus Par Parfit in 1984. This is a year after my daughter was born, so it's not been that long ago. Paul teaches that the disputes between believers and the church must always be settled out of court. Attempting to, to use the public or the secular court system to reconcile, reconcile our disputes has four dire consequences. Number one, if we use the court, the secular court, to reconcile our disputes, it causes a dire consequence in that it trivializes our future destiny. This is verses 1 through 4. I'm not going to torture you by reading that again. But uh, In regard to the matter of settling, settling disputes, Paul focuses on the, on the future settling of all disputes, the final judgment of the world. And although Christians have, have no business judging the world now, and that is so true, it's so true. Yeah, guys, the world is going to do what the world does. The world's doing what the world's supposed to do. You know, the... This, this world is, uh, is governed by the prince of the air. That's the devil. That's the reason it's so bad right now. But God right in the midst doing the good. So it's getting better all the time too. But uh, it's not for us to judge the world. It's for us to make the world a better place by extending the gospel. Trying to get Jesus in some folk. Amen? That is, that is just the truth. But it's not us for us to judge the world right now. But, uh, but Paul goes on to say, if these Corinthian saints are going to judge the world, including the magistrates of this Cor uh, Corinthian, uh, the, the judges and things of that nature, then surely they can sort out some, some minor disputes between one another. And that's spoken of in verse 4. The resource of most Christians should not be the legal process. While this is necessary in some places, think about this, guys. Sometimes the court, I'm not trying to say the courts are bad because it's secular. I'm trying to say that uh, the small disputes, I'm talking about the, the stuff that you take before uh, oh, small claims court, for instance. Those are the things that should be settled in church. Not outside, not in a secular court. The courts, there's some main stuff, guys, that can happen but uh, breaking the law of the land, say murder, child abuse, spousal abuse. There's lots of things that the courts need to be there for, for breaking the law of the land. But if it's disputes that happen here if we're wronged by each other, 
Paul is saying that it needs to be done right here in this church. Amen? Don't let it get out into the world. Well, the church should deal with the distribution between members. Attempting to use the public court system to reconcile our disputes has a, a dire consequence. And number two it is this, is that it com compromises our Christian integrity. This is verses 5 through 6. A Christian church is a community of reconciliation. People from all sorts of, of backgrounds who have been reconciled to God through His Son, Jesus, and made one, th uh, one through the indwelling of, of the Holy Spirit who lives in each Christian. And among Christians, when they, and among Christians, when we gather here. In other words, we have Christ in our spirit. We carry Him with us all the time. When we come into this church house, then we praise, that's what worship is for, is to invite God's Holy Spirit to be with us, not just in us. God can be two different places at the same time. But there's just a spirit of worship that happens when we come together as a church. Amen? <clears throat> Paul seeks to, to shame the Corinthians here. They pride themselves on their wisdom. It's a source of, the, of shame when, when, when it is not resolved within the church. So it is shameful for us to not take care of matters here. When we let them bleed over, bleed over when we go to court, it puts shame on our church. It puts shame on God. And it is a crying shame. That's what Paul's Paul trying to do. He's trying to shame them out of going to court so much. And that's exactly what was happening there. Where there are unresolved disputes, where Christians who fall out of out, out are, no, are not becoming reconciled, it is a source of shame. Not only is it a, a source of shame indirectly, but it is a source of scandal when opposed to the world, when the, excuse me, exposed to the world. The world is led by the devil, and he is looking for the first chance he can to make us look bad as the church, to make God look bad. If we go out into the world, then we are to be lights of this world, salt of this earth. We are, are his ambassadors. But when we act a fool in the church, and it gets out into, as Apostle Paul said, you do it right in the, in the presence of the unbelievers. That is a shame. Attempting to use the public court system to reconcile our disputes has another dire consequence. Number three. It reveals our misplaced priorities, verses 7 through 8. People embark on legal enterprises in the, in the hope that they will win. Isn't that why we go to court? We want to win, right? We want to win. In Corinth, there, was a, there, are, a, there are real winners. There are no, there are no real winners in, 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 the, in Corinth, in the church. And the reason why is that... Uh, both parties are Christians. Both parties are Christian. They're taking one another to court instead of handling that right there in the church. And that they are Christians claiming their, their rights, winning a verdict, or gaining money from another Christian <laughs> should not be most of the, the most important thing. In the case of the Christian who has been wronged or cheated, it is better to lose out Rather than retaliate in, in, in kind, in a kind, in kind, in, in kind and damage. Uh, in other words, if you do go to court, somebody, one of the, a believer, another believer takes you to court. It's better off for you to just swallow your pride. And so, I, in other words, Apostle Paul was saying, uh, uh, "Why not rather be wronged? 
Why not rather be cheated? Let it go. You have, in other words, you have the power at that point to not let the let the world see forgiveness. Ever taking them to court? Someone takes you to court. They can see the right light on this. That's what I'm trying to say. In the case of the Christian been wrong, it's better off to just do like I said. God's reputation must come first. If that means that we uh, that, that our reputation suffers, then we need to just leave that up to Him. Amen? Leave that up to Him. See, we get kind of selfish when we want to take one another to court. It's a very selfish thing. We want justice. We want revenge. We want vengeance. It's a very selfish thing. But God, is His reputation is the most important thing to us, or it should be. Amen? There's a... I guess what Apostle Paul is kind of painting, there's two different sides of this coin here. You've got the world and you've got the Christian, the church. And in that secular court system, guys, this dog-eat-dog world, isn't it? I mean, it's shark-infested. I mean, people just want to win. People trying to, to get on somebody. Just to get money. It's all me, 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 me. Get, get, get. All I can get. You know what I'm saying? But in the church, it's reconciliation. That's what it's all about, or it should be all about. Reconciliation. Amen? There's a story I read about a, a Chinese prince who died, and, and uh, he was given a glimpse of heaven and hell. Okay, there's a the contrast that I'm trying to use here. First glimpse he saw was in hell. And uh, there was a major, only a huge banquet hall. And there was a huge table full of all kind of delicacies that you could imagine that he could eat. I mean, it, 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 just, but everybody was upset. They were mad. They were angry. They were frustrated. See, because the, one, the, the rule is that you could not feed yourself with the hands. You couldn't pick any food up with your hands. And the only utensils that were available for you was chopsticks. But those chopsticks were 10 foot long. Amen. Reminds me of my doctor said, you know, because I told him I had stopped up here. I said, I, I stuck a, 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 a Q-tip in there trying to get it out. He said, the only thing that I want you to stick in your ear is your elbow. You can't get That's it. So they couldn't get the food. I mean, think about it. That thing's 10 foot long. How can you get, you know, it's kind of awkward. So everybody was upset. Then they gave him the glimpse of heaven. And, and the same thing. It was a huge banquet hall, a supper just, uh, just laid out, you know, and food, delicacies, and 10 foot long chopsticks. But everybody was joyful. Everybody was having a good time. You know, they were laughing. Because what they were doing is they had those 10 foot long chopsticks and they were feeding the other person on the other side of the table. Now see, that's the difference between what goes on in the secular court and what goes should go on in the so-called or, or uh, the the, the uh, church court. And the, I say the church court is not really a court. It's a place where you go to settle disputes. And uh, that, guys, is our elder meeting. See, as elders of the church, it is our job to settle disputes in the church. All right. That's why the reason we open it up at 6 o'clock, between 6 and 7, and we'll go as long as we need to if anybody has anything that they need to bring before us. And we'll go along. I remember one time I had to do that years ago. I wasn't really anything in the church then. There I go again. I'm on a roll. I need to get one of those holders up here on my podium. <laughs> a coaster or something into something to go in there. We gotta drill a hole. I need something to get that second. I did that last week, I think, didn't I? <laughs> it's not really big enough for me to set it up there. But I've never had that problem till just now, last week and this week. Anyway, here to there, let's get back on the sermon. 
That's the way it is in the in, in the, but the court, the secular court versus the church. And I remember, I get back to what I was saying. I remember when I had to do that. Uh, our son was uh, when he first got married the second time. Uh, him and his wife were split up, and his wife was good friends with someone here at the church, a church leader, and. She told him, she told him, she said, you just need to get a divorce. Just get rid of him. Just get a divorce. That hit me all wrong. That's not what God says. That's not Bible. Amen. Unless something's really, I mean, like a spousal abuse or something like that happens or, or cheating on somebody, you don't get a divorce. God hates divorce. So I told the elders, man, I need to, I need to get a little meeting here. I have a dispute with a church member. So we gathered together there, and I, I just laid it out. I said, you know, just, uh, she denied it, but still, we laid it out, and we aired it out, and we were able to, to forgive one another and, uh, like that and, just, and go on in peace. But that had to be settled. That had to be settled, and that's, that's how we did it. Just went before the elders. It didn't have to be all of them, just one or two. We attempt to to take the our, uh, to use the public court system to reconcile our disputes. It causes another dire consequence, and that's number four, and the final point. It question it it questions our real identity. That's verses nine through eleven. Paul asks a rhetorical question: Do you not know? that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. So we push this into a category of wickedness. When we go before the court system, instead of dispute, uh, settling disputes right here in the church, Paul akins it to wickedness. Amen? Paul infers that such things like Deli uh, deliberately cheating and, def and defrauding someone falls into the category of wickedness. This calls into question the spiritual standing of any such person and their inheritance rights into God's kingdom. Think about that. Let's just read through those once again. Ver beginning in verse 8. Instead, you, uh, you yourselves cheat and, and, and do wrong. And you do this to your brothers. Do you not know that the, wick, that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? That's what I mean. It is, I end it to wickedness. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, or homosexual offenders, or thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And he said that some of you used to be that way. That's what he said in verse 11. And that is what some of you, used, uh, some of you were. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. So it brings into question if you're really a Christian, if you just want to take your brother to court. That's what Paul is saying. It is, it's shining a light. It's a, it's a test. I mean, put it that way. It's a test. A telltale sign. That you might not even be Christian. You might not have Christ in your heart. Like I said, that's a greedy, that's a, a, a selfish and greedy thing to do when you want to take someone to court. You just, you know, you can do it in the, in the name of justice. But as the Apostle Paul said, why not be wrong? Why not be cheated and just let it go? 
church members aren't, uh, aren't uh, righteous guys. It's, 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 they're, it's the world in the church. I mean, not the world in the church. Let me rephrase that. People, anytime it, let me say it like this. No church is perfect. Let me put it like this then. Churches, all churches are perfect until people show up. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. That's when it becomes imperfect. So there's going to be disputes. But it's how we handle those disputes is the important thing. That's what Apostle Paul is saying here. We need to settle out of court. Amen. And settle right here in this church. Amen. All right, let's wrap this up. If you are a Christian, then you can't afford to be in any kind of dispute with another Christian, especially within the same church. So not this, this, this church, God. It's, if you have a Christian brother that you're friends with outside this church, it means you don't take them to court either. You don't take a fellow Christian, but especially right here in the church. You need to be reconciled with, with your brother or sister, despite whether uh, whether it is, resolves a legal cause, a legal case, excuse me. If you are the wronged party, be willing to, to forgive and, and ask God, ask the Lord to remove all bitterness, bitterness from your heart towards that person. You can't allow, that's what Paul, so Paul says in another, uh, uh, another letter of his, he says, you can't allow a bitter root to take, to take, a, uh, take hold in your church. Their church has been divided over this trivial little things. That's really so important that we that we uh, they handle these things. We we uh, settle the disputes. And if you are the one who has been wronged, I'm sorry, do is wronged another. We need to seek forgiveness. Can't allow our bitter fruit to grow up in our church. We need to have forgiveness for one another. I talked a lot today about the, the contrast between heaven and hell. I've talked about the, uh, uh, how the court system is, uh, secular system is, is uh, led by this greed and things of that nature. I mean, other than just the law courts where you judge someone to go to prison. The difference between a church member is that it's about reconciliation. That's the main focus in the church. You're not out for reconciliation in the, in the major cause. You just have to win. Reconciliation is what we receive by God. We are reconciled because we have a sin bent. And we are reconciled to Him through His Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sin. He paid the price so that we could be reconciled to God so that we could have a relationship with Him. That relationship is deeper than just knowing Him. That relationship is He... he, he be, I, me and God, you and God, we become one. Jesus Christ said, I am the groom. You are the bride. In the book of Genesis, chapter 2, I believe it is verse 24. It's when God brought Adam and Eve together. He said, uh, for this reason a man shall leave his mother and father, and two of them shall become one flesh. We become one with God. On a deep level, the deepest part of us in our spirit. And that sanctification process starts right then. But in order to get Christ in your spirit, you have got to come to Him and receive that free gift He gives you. That debt will be wiped off. He paid for it. It's a done deal. He's already done it. The Bible says that when He was hanging on that cross, that the, the earth quaked beneath Him because of the weight of the sin of this world going on Him. He's already done it. He's taken your sin. He's taken 
Every bad person, everything that's ever happened from the creation of this world all the way up to the point where God ushers in His new kingdom. All of that sin went on Him. It's a shame if you don't receive that gift. I want to give you that opportunity right now. If you'd like to ask Christ into your heart, maybe you have that evening that I was describing earlier. If you're watching on Facebook Live or, or YouTube, I pray that God would uh, convict that person that was that is lost and has the deepness in our heart. The Bible says that now, this moment, this very second, is, is the time of salvation. Not tomorrow, not the next day. Right now. You don't know what a day will bring. Something can happen to you when you leave the church. When you get up out of your, uh, out of your, uh, after watching the, this service on YouTube or, or Facebook Live, you can go outside and something happens and you just die. And you'll be before God. And you're going to have to answer to Him why He should let you into His heaven. Amen. So if you want Christ to come into your heart, guys, you want to ask Him into your heart, you do it right where you're sitting. I also uh, mentioned everybody too, remind you that the altar's open at any time. But if you've got something that's weighing heavy on your heart, don't you dare leave this church with it. Bring it up here and bring glory to God by doing so. If you want to ask Christ in your heart, you can do it right where you're sitting. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You just have to admit to Him that you're a sinner. You have to repent. So just do that. Just tell Him. Just to say, Lord, I, I know I'm a sinner. And right now, Lord, I turn from that sinful life. I agree, Lord, that you are right, and I am wrong, and I want to do things your way. So, Jesus, I'm asking you to come into my heart now. I receive you by faith into my spirit. I believe you died on that cross for my sins, that you rose back to life living in me now. I recognize you as my God and my friend Lord, and my Lord. And from this moment, sir, forward, I will serve only you. In Jesus' precious, precious name. Amen. If you're watching on Facebook, you're watching on YouTube, uh, and anyone that's here that's said that prayer just now, it is the most important thing that you'll ever do in your life. And I need to talk to you about it. I need to uh, just go over some things about your new life. You do Christian walk. And if you're watching on YouTube, my telephone number's right there. You just give me a call. It's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life, and I need to talk to you about it. We're going to have communion now. And uh, at Rapid J. Cowboy Church, we have communion every first Sunday. You know, a lot of cowboy churches do it on fifth Sunday, but uh, that's just an afterthought to me. You know, God deserved the first. Like we do it, He convicted me of, uh, early on that we need to do it on the first Sunday of every month. Street, we're here on the first day of the month of the week. Amen. He deserved the first. If you're a new uh, visitor, if you'll just peel back this first layer of the cellophane and it'll, it'll expose the bread and then of course the, the wine is, is underneath there. It's not real wine, it's grape juice. Grape juice. <laughs> uh, Brian is going to sing, uh, him and uh, Robert are going to sing a song and uh, take this opportunity when he does is to ask God to forgive you of any of your sins that, uh, and be like David, just ask him to search you. You got something against somebody we're talking about brothers and sisters and settling out of court if you ask God to forgive you he will but we need to forgive each other
they were eating, and this is in the upper room, while they were eating, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he offered it to them saying, drink from it all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Father, once again, we love you. Father, we ask that you just receive this communion as a sacrifice before you, Father God. It is our attempt to be right with you in this moment in time. Ever so brief, it might, may be, Father God, that uh, you are centered in our life where you belong, Lord Jesus. And you're centered in this church where you belong. Father, we love you. It's like I said. Father, we ask that you just take these things that we're learning. Father, show us how to apply them to our lives, especially today. We don't need to be taking each other to the courts and, and uh, give, just bringing a uh, disparaging uh, look on your name, Father God. So, Lord, forgive us where we may have already done this. But, Lord, just to, Father, just convict us in our hearts not to do it in the, in the future. Father, until we can get back up here Thursday night for the buck out, Father God, next, uh, next Sunday, we ask for your perfect speed and we ask for your favor in our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, guys, we love you. We'll see you next week.